I can't take a heart that's broke making over again. But I know a man who can. I can't take a soul. We give thanks to the Almighty for those of, those of us who are still here. And in church, I hear people testify, I'm standing on top of my grave. Uh, you know, they're sharing the goodness of God being alive. Others are in their grave beneath the earth. But we thank the Almighty that we are here to be his arms extended. I did say every good godly person is a Samaritan. And a Samaritan represents God's eyes, God's ears, yeah, God's voice, God's hands, and importantly, God's heart to others. For inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, our Lord said, you have done it unto me. So life is all about serving, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're here to serve each other. Jesus said that. He said, hey, I, I could come and have all of you to serve me, but I'm not here to be served. I'm here to serve. The Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. Those were his exact words. And this is what Time of Refreshing has been doing with the many persons who have sat here over time and others will do to share with you as the lord has blessed them so they can empower you empower all of us to be the best we can for ourselves for our families our neighbors our friends and certainly for jamaica land we love with those words i welcome all of you brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen from home and abroad, near and far. Of course, we are broadcasting on uh, many platforms, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Instagram Live. And you all are familiar with those platforms, especially those who are in yonder land across seas. Local to us in Jamaica, across the parishes, Flow Cable Network, Channel 602 and 672, and Digicel Play, Channel 20. So, so from any of those, you can connect with us. And please, we ask you to call your friends, call your neighbors, let them know we are on, and blessings are in store as at other times. Well, of course, you know, Time of refreshing brings uh, many surprises, yeah, surprises from time to time, and you welcome them. Uh, I don't know if I should say we have a surprise today. Not really, but certainly for the first time, we are having a speciality that we have not had before, and you will be blessed. So today we've got a dietitian in the house yeah she's going to tell us tell us about what to eat and how to eat and what not to eat and how to balance good health with your life and we really look forward to all of that so i'm going to get right into it and i'll sit here listen and learn because i really need to know about some more stuff about that heating thing okay so we have dr sabrina Palomino. All right, Miss Sabrina Palomino. You know, okay, all right, there we go. <laughs> and she's going to be speaking to us. She is a registered dietitian slash nutritionist. So she can tell us all about the food groups, etc., etc. Practicing in the field of nutrition for some 14 years. No new kid on the block. Over 10 years, you have earned your stripes, for sure. And, of course, she currently serves at the Kingston Public Hospital, formerly employed at the St. Catherine 
Health Department. And we are delighted to have her here with us today. The Lord bless you, madam. It's my pleasure to have you here on Time of Refreshing. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be here today. First dietitian to speak to us. And we are delighted to have you. And I'm sure our audiences out there at home and abroad, they are eagerly waiting to hear from you. So it is from me all over to you and to all your viewers. All right. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here today. And today I'll be talking to us about healthy eating. So we know nutrition is very important in all aspects of life from infancy all the way to adulthood. So it's very important that we try and to eat healthy. Now, most persons will say they don't know how they want to, but they're not sure how to eat healthy. So today I'll be going through that, be talking to you about the basic food groups, and also I'll be zoning in on how to eat living with diabetes and hypertension, otherwise called high blood pressure. So healthy eating means getting a variety of foods that provide nutrients that your body needs to maintain your health, for you to feel good, and for you to have energy. These nutrients that we get from the food that is required for our body to feel good include our protein, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, and of course, our water. Now, healthy eating is important for everyone. When combined with physical activity or exercise and maintaining a healthy weight, healthy eating is an excellent, excellent way for you to keep your body strong and for you to stay healthy. Now, most of us, when it comes to nutrition, we want to eat healthy, but we're not sure what it is that we can do or how to do it. So if you can see my presentation on screen, I have a pic of what we call our food-based dietary guidelines for Jamaica. Basically what it is, it's a chart that shows you our six food groups and how they're divided in that chart is how we expect you to eat throughout the day to maintain a healthy diet. And then looking at the chart, you see how important it is to keep hydrated, to have water daily, and also to have some amount of physical activity. Now how this food group or how this chart is divided, if you realize almost half of what you eat on a daily basis should come from your vegetables and your fruits followed by a larger portion from your staples, which we call our starchy foods in Jamaica. And to a smaller extent, you have our food from animals, our legumes, and nuts, and our fats and oils. Now I'll go further into these food groups and discuss them with you. So the first one we're going to look at is our staple foods, which is what we usually call our starchy foods in Jamaica. These give us the nutrient of carbohydrate, which is basically the main nutrient that our body needs for energy for us to go walk, to sing, to praise, to do anything. We need that carbohydrate. We need that nutrient. And this is the food group that we get it from, our staples. And it, of course, includes our cereals, which are our bread, our dried cereals like our macaroni, spaghetti, rice, oats, as well as our starchy fruits, roots, and tubers and our ground provisions such as our bananas, plantain, breadfruits, yam potatoes, dashi, and cassava. And when you look at this chart, you will see that we have things that are more in the whole grain variety, which we encourage you to have things that are of whole grain, where you get added fiber and the body don't digest them as rapidly versus if you have the processed foods. And I'll discuss the importance of these types of food when we go further into diabetes and how to eat living with diabetes. The next one is our legumes, which is our peas, beans, and nuts group. And of course, these will provide our bodies with protein as well as some amount of carbohydrates and fibers. Now, this food group, this food group is very important. It's a good group for those who desire not to eat animal-based protein, then they can use these food groups to get their daily protein intake. So this group is a good alternative for those who don't desire to eat animal products. Our next food group is that of our vegetables. Now our vegetables will provide us with our vitamins and our minerals. And we have two types of vegetables. We have what we call our dark green leafy vegetables. And as well as other vegetables are sometimes referred to as our starchy veg, like our pumpkins and our carrots and our beets. Now, vegetables are very, very important, and based off the chart that I showed earlier, almost half of what we eat on a daily basis should come from our vegetables along with our fruits. 
Now the next slide shows you our fruits. So we are blessed in terms of having a variety of fruits in our island. So we encourage you to have fruits, your mangoes, your guavas, your oranges, pineapples, or West Indian cherry, a variety of fruits daily. Now it's important to note that fruits are naturally high in sugars, and as such, we do not want you to go overboard when it comes with your fruits. We usually say two whole fruits per day is a very good recommendation for you to have. You get your vitamins, your minerals, and of course you get the natural added sugars, but we don't want you to have the excess, especially if you have diabetes. You have to be careful with this food group. Next, we go into our food from animals food group. Now, this is the one that will provide us with protein, and these would include our meat or poultry or fish, as well as our milk, eggs, livers, sardines. Those are what we call our food from animals. And as I said earlier, they provide us with the nutrient of protein. Mm. And last but not least, we'll go into the food groups of fats and oils. Now, in this food group, you notice two distinct foods, which is our ackee and our pear. These are in our fats and oil group as these are high sources of fat. So fats and oils not just only comes from your margarine or your vegetable oil or your mayonnaise, but you can also get fats or oil from your ackee, your avocado, as well as your coconut powder or your coconut milk. So what we encourage you to do is to eat less of these food groups. So let's put it into perspective. How should I eat? Now that I have this information about the six food groups, how can I put them together? The Ministry of Health has what it calls the Dietary Guidelines for Jamaican. It's basically eight steps that we ask, we encourage persons to follow in order to get healthy or to live a healthy lifestyle. And the first one is to eat a variety of foods from all six food groups. So it's very important that on a daily basis, we try to get foods from all the six food groups so we could get a variety of nutrients to nourish the body. If you stick to main only two or one food group on a daily basis, it means you're only getting one particular nutrient and we want you to have a variety so you can have a healthy diet. Eat a variety of fruits daily, eat a variety of vegetables daily. And we also encourage you to include peas, beans, and nuts in your daily diet. Most of us, we tend to have peas and beans maybe only on a Sunday or maybe in the week if we have a little stew peas. But as I said earlier, our peas and beans are good sources of protein, fiber, B vitamins, so they're important that you try to include them on a daily basis. We encourage you to reduce your intake of salty and processed foods as these are very, very high in sodium and they will affect our high blood pressure. We also ask you to reduce your intakes of fats and oils and to reduce your intake of sugary foods and drinks. And last but not least, we do encourage you to make physical activity a part of your daily routine. So once again, you'll see this pic of our food-based dietary guidelines to the right of your screen. And basically what it is, we have combined all the six food groups for you, show you how they're supposed to be divided on a daily basis. So half of what you eat should come from your fruits and veg, followed by your staples with less amount from your food from animals, your legumes and nuts, and the least amount from your fats and oils. So now with all this information, you're probably saying, what can I do to make healthy eating easier? I now know the six food groups. I now know how I should eat. So how can I make it easy? Because you always hear a person say, healthy eating is very hard. It's very expensive. So let's see how we can make it easier for you. Now this pic that I have up on the screen shows you how we expect your plate to be divided throughout the day. What we encourage you to do is to make half of your plate vegetables. The next half you divide that into two and you have one portion your staples and the other your protein or your meat source or if you're not, you're not someone that likes to eat meat, you can make it your peas and beans. So to get your diet where you want it to be, start making small changes. Let's not be too ambitious and say, we get up tomorrow, we're going to say, all right, I'm going to change my eating habits, so I'm going to do everything all at once. No, we encourage you to take baby steps. So you start 
with making small changes. Start with one meal, then you progress. You don't have to make everything perfect. So let's start with one meal. So if you decide you're going to start with lunch, you start with lunch to make it how we want it to be. Half our vegetables, our next half, we divide it into our staples and our protein. And for your snacks, we said aim for two food groups. But for your main meals, try to aim for at least three food groups at a meal. Now, many persons might say healthy eating is expensive. So what we encourage you to do is to eat foods that are in season. Once the food is in season, it tends to be a whole lot cheaper, so we encourage you to make use of it. So if a, veg, a particular veg is, cheap, is in season, it's cheaper, so you utilize it. If a fruit is in season, it's cheaper, so you utilize it. And also, we have to watch the amount that we eat, or portion control, because we tend to eat more than what the body needs, and then we eat excess. And if we eat off all that we have, we're going to buy more. Mm -hmm. So we have to watch our portion control, our portion sizes. That is very, very important in trying to eat healthy. So let's go into how can we mix our foods to get them to the best nutritious ways that they can be. We always encourage persons to mix your food. And we have what we know as a multi-mix principles. So the best meal is for a meal for you to have all six food groups in your meals. But we know most times that cannot be possible. So how can you mix your food to get the best nutrition out of it? We have what is known as the multi-mix principle. And basically what it does is it combines four main food groups or staples or food from animals or legumes and, and or vegetables. So the first mix we're going to look at is our two mix. Now, this is a good mix, and this is usually what is most common or most popular, is that you mix a staple with a food from animals, or you mix a staple with a legume. Now, this is a good mix because your body will get carbohydrate, you will get protein, and you will get fat. So you get the three major nutrients, so it's not a bad mix. However, most of us in Jamaica, how we mix our two mix, sometimes we will combine a staple with a vegetable. So say, for example, we'll have rice, with maybe steamed cabbage. Now, if we looked, if we break down that meal for you and look at it, the main nutrients you'll be getting from both of those are what? Your carbohydrate. So that meal will be lacking in protein, so you need some amount of protein. So that combination that we usually practice is one that is not nourishing to our body because we'll be lacking in a major nutrient, that of protein. So for our two mix, we always say you start with your staple, then you can combine it with a protein source, which can be your food from animals or your legumes. The three mix, is, which is a better mix, now st you have your staples, you add your food from animals, but now you add a vegetable. Or you can have, have your staples, your legumes if you're not a meat person, and then you add your vegetables. Now this is a better mix, because with this mix, you not only get carbohydrate, proteins, and fat, but you also get some amount of vitamins and minerals from your vegetables. And the last mix, which is the best mix of all, which is our four mix, includes our staples, our food from animals, our legumes, and our vegetables. So we get four of the major six food groups when we mix our food like this. And one of the most common, I always say on Sundays is usually when we have our four mix, right? On Sundays, we'll have our rice and peas with our chicken and our vegetables. And we have our four mix. And another example of a four mix is that of your soups. But we'll have our ground provisions, which are staples. We'll have our vegetables from our pumpkins and our carrots. We tend to put a little protein, whether it be or chicken or anything like that. And sometimes we might add beans to make a pea soup. And then you get a four mix. So to put these all together, we always encourage you to start with your staples as your base because your body needs a carbohydrate. And also, you, then you build on it, whether you're adding your food from animals, your legumes, and then your vegetables. So you can get all those nutrients that your body needs, the variety of nutrients that we talked about earlier. So now that we have discussed the food groups, we're going to zone in on two conditions, that of diabetes and hypertension. Most persons, when they have diabetes or high blood pressure, they say, I don't know what to eat, or it's very expensive. So how can we work around this? So I'm going to look firstly at diabetes. 
Now, how our body uses food is once we put the food in our bodies, we chew, we swallow, the stomach breaks it down, it changes it into glucose, and then it goes into our body cells for energy. Now, when we have diabetes, our body don't work that way. We'll eat the food, it breaks it down into glucose. However, our body is not able to really put it into the cells because our little organ known as the pancreas is not producing the insulin that it should. So as such, we need to watch what we eat when we have diabetes. Now, how do we manage our diabetes? There's usually three ways. Your diet, your diet and exercise, or your diet and your medication. And if you notice, notice sorry, the two common factors in your treatment is what? Your diet and your exercise. So it's very important that you watch what you eat as well as you exercise. Now, most persons, when they are diagnosed with diabetes, they'll say, oh, I cannot afford it. It's going to be expensive. It is an extra expense to my pocket. There is no such thing as a diabetic diet. For a person living with diabetes, your diet can be that which the entire family eat. You can eat the same foods that your family eat, but you need to watch the amount that you eat and also the timing of your meals. So earlier I said to you, your portion control is important. So as a person living with diabetes, you need to watch how much it is that you eat. And also the timing of your meals is very, very important. We don't want you to go too long without eating and we don't want you to skip your meals. It is not an extra expense to your pocket because it's the same food that your family eat is what you're going to eat. But now you just have to watch the amount that you eat. And also the quality, the type of food that you eat is very, very important. Everybody is an individual. Everybody's body requires different amount of nutrients. So it's very important that you consult your dietitian or your nutritionist so you can get an individualized meal plan that works best for you. So I'll just be giving you general guidelines today, but for something that is tailored to you, we encourage you to keep your appointments with your dietitian or your nutritionist so you can get something that is tailored to you. Now, how should I eat if I have diabetes? We encourage you to eat three balanced meals per day and small snacks in between. And by snacks, I don't mean high sugar, high calorie snacks, not the ones in the little bag that make noise when we open them. Snacks, by definition, mean smaller, healthier meal. So each meal should contain a little carbohydrate. It should have your protein. And at and all times, we encourage you to have your vegetables. Again, the importance of watching your portion sizes and reading your food labels. We're living in an age of convenience where almost everything we buy or eat is in a bag, a bottle, or a can. So we have food labels attached to them that tell us what is in our food that we eat. So it's very important that you read your food labels. So when you have diabetes, you have to put a little carbohydrate, or sometimes we call it starch in the body because the body needs it to function. And we find our carbohydrate in our starchy foods or our staples, our fruits, our dairy products, and sweets as well, and to a lesser extent in our vegetables. So if you notice on your screen, you see your staples, your vegetables, and your fruits. Now these are the three food groups that will give your body carbohydrate or starch when you have diabetes. So you need to eat these, but you don't need to have excess. You must always try to have a balance. So you must always pair these starchy foods with something from the protein source. So we encourage you to eat moderate amount of carbohydrates at each meal, but also to balance your intake with protein and fat to help to your glucose levels to stay in a healthy range. And if you look at your screen, you'll see your staples, your food from animals, and your fats and oils. Always try to combine these three food groups when you have diabetes so you get the macro or the major nutrients that your body needs, which is your carbohydrate, your protein, and a little fat. Now, what it is that we recommend that you don't have as a person living with diabetes, we encourage you to stay away from sugary or coated cereals, sugary coated granolas, canned fruits that are usually stored in a heavy syrup, dried fruits, 
which are usually sweeter than fresh fruits by far. Donuts, sweetbreads, your sodas, your box drinks, anything that is very, very high in sugar, we encourage you to stay away from them as a person living with diabetes as they're known as empty calories. They do nothing to the body but to elevate your blood sugar levels, let your blood sugar levels go high and not offer any other nutrient that the body needs. So these are mainly the ones we encourage you to stay away from, but you can have your other food groups, your whole grain products as needed. Now it's very important that you read your food labels as a person living with diabetes so you can identify sugars in your product. So most time we'll buy a product, it might say on the front, no sugar added, but we drink it and it tastes a bit sweet to us. And we say, oh, but the front says no sugar added. Just turn to the back to that rectangular box that you see at the back that says nutrition facts. It always tends to have your ingredients list, which will tell you whether sugar is added. And sugar has many names, sucrose, glucose, high fructose, corn syrup. And it also shows you how much sugar is in your product. So reading the ingredient li list and the nutrition panel on processed food can tell you if the product contains added sugars, not just the exact amount, but if the product also has natural sugars. So I'll have a sample nutrition facts on my screen here. And if you look at it, this product is a 20 ounce bottle. And in this entire product, you have 65 grams of sugars. Now for a person out there who don't understand what you see 65 grams of sugar, what does that mean to us? Let's look at that. Four grams of sugar is equal to one teaspoon of sugar. So when you have your product, you turn around and you look at the sugars or the total carbohydrates. If you see 65 grams, what does that mean to me? You would divide 65 by that four and then it will tell you how much is it in terms of teaspoons. And teaspoons we tend to understand a bit easier. So let me use an example, one that is quick to understand. So if you have a product that has 20 grams of total carbohydrates or sugars, when you divide that by four, what do you get? You get five. So that means that product has five teaspoons of sugar. So I would encourage you after this presentation, take any product that you have in your pantry, in your cupboards, and look at it and see what is the total carbohydrate or the sugars, divide it by four, and see how much teaspoons of sugar is in a serving. And we normally say, if you look at your percentage daily values, if it is less than 5% of sugars, that's a good product to have. If it is more than 20%, that's a no-no product for you as a person living with diabetes. Now, for those without diabetes, we do have recommendations in terms of how much sugars you should have on a daily basis. For us in Jamaica, we say eight teaspoons of sugars per day for the persons without diabetes. And the WHO or the World Health Organization recommend that children, preschoolers, have no more than four teaspoons per day, 45 year old, three teaspoons, teens, six, women, six, and men can go up to nine teaspoons per day. We might say to ourselves, but that's a lot. But if we, as I said, go in that cupboard when you're finished and look at your product and divide it, you'll be amazed. Some of the things that we drink will have up to 20 teaspoons of sugar. And sometimes we have two or three for the day. So we're exceeding the daily amount that we're supposed to have. Now that I've talked about diabetes, I'm going to move on to hypertension or high blood pressure. How do I eat? Or what should I look out for when I have high blood pressure? Now, blood pressure, as you know, put, is the pressure that is put on the walls of the blood vessels as a heart pumps blood through them. Now, how do we eat when we have high blood pressure? We encourage you to eat foods rich in fiber like our fruits, vegetables, peas, and beans, and our staples. Because these products are low in sodium, they're natural, so they have less sodium in them. They also give us fiber that our body needs, as well as other vitamins and minerals. And of course, we encourage you to exercise. So it's very important that you combine your diet, which is what you eat, with exercise. So how do we know 
how much sodium is in our food, how can we identify it. Now, with high blood pressure, we ask you to watch your salt intake. Now, when you buy a product or you looked on a product, you won't necessarily, you won't see the word salt, you see sodium. And sodium on your food labels is salt. So we encourage you when you have high blood pressure to look out for sodium in your products. And some foods that are very high in sodium tend to be our canned products, processed foods. They tend to be very high. So like our canned soups, our bag soups, our processed cheese, our tomato sauce, ketchup, anything that is convenient or ready-made tend to be very, very high in sodium. So we encourage you when you have high blood pressure to watch out for foods that are high in sodium. Now, when you have high blood pressure, how much salt is it that I should have? Most persons will ask that. We normally say you don't pass 2,300 milligrams of sodium on a daily basis. But what is that? That is one teaspoon of salt per day or less. Once you have high blood pressure, you do not have more than that. And that would include what you get from your processed foods as well. So we encourage you to eat less processed foods and meat as well as to eat less canned foods as these are high in sodium and will help to elevate your blood pressure. So back again to our food labels. How do we identify sodium or salt on our food labels? That rectangular box again on the side or the back of your package will tell you how much salt is in your product. We encourage you to read your food labels and look out for the word sodium. You will not see salt. You will see sodium, so you look out for that. If it is less than 5% of sodium, that is a good product to have. If it is more than 20%, is usually very, very high in sodium. And this peak that I have here, my product has 460 milligrams of sodium, which is 20% of the product is sodium. So that means that this product is high in sodium. So this is something that you should not have as a person living with high blood pressure. So to recap, healthy eating is very, very important in all aspects of life. We encourage you to eat a variety of foods daily from all our six food groups so you can get all the nutrients that your body needs. If you're interested in getting a copy of this diagram that you see on screen for yourself, you can always visit the Ministry of Health and Wellness website, type in our food-based dietary guidelines, and we have handouts on our website that you could use and read through to help you in terms of healthy eating. So all foods are important. You need to watch the amount that you eat and ensure that you get a variety of nutrients daily. So what can I do to ensure that I eat healthy? Take small steps every day and you'll get there one day. I know it's a lot of information to process, but take small steps. We all want to eat healthy, so let's begin with one meal at a time and take very small steps to reach our desired goals. So thank you very much for having me today. I hope you have learned something and I hope the information was beneficial. Thank you. Well, thank you so very much, Miss Sabrina. And we want to open the line so that persons can make a phone call. Some of you have been saying so much there on YouTube and on Facebook. You're also disseminating information. You're sharing. Oh my goodness, I turned off my mic. I'm sorry. Well, thank you so much, Miss Sabrina. Sorry for that, everybody. My mic was off. We, we are only human, okay? <laughs> so you've done a fantastic job, and I was saying that so many persons are uh, giving information there on Facebook and YouTube, sharing their own experience and all of that, their health. Uh, position and all of that so we thank you but we want to hear from you by telephone the numbers are appearing on the screen if they are not as yet they are 876 876 uh, I'm trying to remember them from my brain okay 876 988 876 
I got many numbers in my head, you know, so sometimes it became a little, come a little difficult to decipher which is needed. 876-988-6262-876-939-1500. Very solid information, says Avis Benjamin. Uh, Miss Sabrina, you spoke concerning the six food groups. Yes. Uh, if we were to, I know you, you certainly made it abundant to clear that all from each of these food groups is very important for persons to, you know, eat. But if we were to put them in order of priority, is there any such thing? Can you put them in order of priority? So from the legumes to the vegetables to the fruits to the food from animals to the fats and oil and of course the staple on top. So it's important as I discussed with the multi-mix principle is that you always have your staples as your base. Because mm -hmm. the main nutrient that the body uses is carbohydrates. Okay. So we always encourage you start with your staples as your base. Make your base healthy. Meaning when you're choosing your staple foods try to choose whole grains. So whole wheat bread, whole wheat rice, flour, so you make your base very, very strong. And then from your base, you can add on. So you will add on your protein source, which could either be your food from animals or your legumes. Mm -hmm. And then you can add even more by adding your vegetables. So it's always important to ensure that you have your staples. Yes. You balance it with your protein and your vegetables. Now, I always say fat is the given nutrient, mm -hmm. meaning anything we're going to prepare, we're more likely are going to use a small amount of oil mm -hmm. or margarine so it's always the given nutrient that's what i call it we're always going to have it because if we're having meat meat sometimes naturally have fat in it yeah so it's always going to be there so to put it together well always start with your staples make it a healthy base and then you build on with your protein sources which is your meat kind or your legumes and then add your vegetables to it great uh, I notice you mentioned that vegetables are very, very important. VVI. Yes. <laughs> very, very important. Very, very important. And you mean all types of vegetables? Yes. Okay. So depending on what medical condition you might have, some vegetables might be a no-no. Okay. But other than that, it's very important to have your vegetables, especially when you have your diabetes and your high blood pressure because they're very, very low in carbohydrate, very good source of fiber. So when you're watching your portion control, you're going to eat less. So you use your vegetables as your fillers. They help to fill the tummy. They won't elevate your blood sugar levels, right? And they give you those vitamins and minerals that your body needs. So it's very important to have your vegetables. And as I know, persons will say they are expensive, but I always encourage you to buy what is in season. If it is in season, it tends to be cheaper, so try and utilize it that way. Okay, speak to what Ms. Bow Sh Sh Shradin Bowland is saying there. She's putting some things there. Fish, <laughs> melon, pineapple. Is that a lemon? Yes, Avocado? so she's encouraging you to eat variety, okay. right? The fish, your, pro your food from animals, your fruits, your vegetables, and of course your pear or what we call our avocado, which is our fats and oils. So she's showing you that it's important to have variety. Variety oh. is very, very important. And of course, you also mentioned portion control. Yes. It's, it, it's not, well, let, let's say in Jamaica, rural areas, country areas, rural areas. Sometimes because of, you know, the economic situation and people are not able to really and truly, and this could be extended to across the nation, really, to purchase things that are, very healthy for them and eat very healthily. So a man will come from his field and he eat a big bowl of yam. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what he has. Five fingers of banana. And that's what he has. How healthy is that for him? Well, it depends. That's why I say everybody's an individual. Okay. So a person who depends on the level of how you exercise your physical activity. So if you're a person that works out a lot or do a lot of hard work like the farmer, you will need more than the person that just sits at a desk and not very, mm -hmm. very active. Mm -hmm. However, 
five fingers of banana, three slices of yam seems a, is an a excess, little too much. It's a little yes. too much. Yes. But that's what we encourage him to have. So that's not bad. That's whole grain, mm -hmm. right? So remember, we talk about healthy base. Our ground provisions are ho considered whole grain, so they give us fiber, mm -hmm. vitamins, and minerals that our body needs. So most of the time, we think the product that we have is not good for us, but it is. Because mm -hmm. in terms of that, but the only thing is that he has to know what his portion control, how much he eats. Now, most times when we get persons in and we encourage them to eat less, They'll say to you, oh, Miss Palomino, that can't fool my belly. Uh. <laughs> you know, that is going to itch up in me. Yeah, I teeth. I hear that all yes, the time. Yes. So what I, I always go back to a scenario where I ask someone, if you share your plate of food and for some reason you're called away from your food, when you come back to your meal, what happens? You don't feel mm -hmm, for it. Mm -hmm, you say your mm -hmm, mind changed, mm -hmm. right? It's very important to note that it takes a while for the stomach to tell the brain that it is full. Wow. For that feeling of satiety or fullness to kick in. So when we have small amounts of food, when we finish eating it, we might not feel full immediately afterwards. But after a time, we then realize that our tummy is full. Yes. Right? Yeah. Versus if we have this huge plate in front of us. It's warm steam coming out of mm -hmm. it. We tend to consume it all at once, and then we're very, very uncomfortable. Yeah. And he think he eating healthy is not really about a, a stomach full, a belly full. No. Okay. Right. It's getting the right amount of portions and the nutrients in the body that your body needs. Yes. I see somebody asking if they can have beetroot if they have high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Now, beetroot is a vegetable and it has iron in there. Iron helps to build your blood count and your blood count is different from your blood pressure. However, everybody is an individual. So some person's body might react differently to food. Some persons will have beetroot and it doesn't affect their blood pressure, while some will say they have it and it elevates their blood pressure. So you have to know how your body reacts to food. Mm -hmm. So you can try and have it and then see how it is that your body reacts. But most times it should not be a problem if you have high blood pressure to have beetroot because it's a vegetable and a good source of iron. And iron helps to build our blood count, okay. which is very, very important, especially for our females. Great. We, we're waiting on your call. Ms. Palomino want to take some questions. From you, if you call one of those numbers, 876-988-6262, 876-939-1500, please make a call and she will certainly address your question. Someone is saying, my heart races when I heat wheat bread. <laughs> Could that be wheat? So that's what I'm saying. Everybody is an individual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to know how your body reacts to food. Everybody body re reacts differently. So you have to know how, when you eat something, how your body reacts to it. So that mm -hmm. person, when they eat wheat bread, their heart race. Some persons... So, no problem. study your body, how it responds to... How it responds to food. Okay, wonderful. Uh, someone earlier, I saw it on YouTube, spoke about jackfruit yes. is a fruit. How does it fit in the fruit group, really, the jackfruit? Is it really a... Yes, it's a fruit, uh -huh. right? So every food group has its own in terms of what is considered a serving. Mm -hmm. So we usually say a jackfruit, maybe if you have a large one and you probably you will cut that in about four pieces. Mm -hmm. So you'll be about half of that four pieces usually considered a serving of jackfruit. As I said, we have our food-based dietary guidelines, so you can always go on the website and download that booklet. It breaks down the food groups for you in terms of what is considered a portion or what is considered a serving of our different fruits, vegetables, staples, mm -hmm. food from animals, and our legumes. Well, let's go all the way to Atlanta, USA. Welcome, Juliet. Hello, good afternoon. Yes. Um, so I'm um, calling up to find out about um, if you, you know, when the family bloodline is has uh, diabetes all over it, and you want to prevent it. Um, you know, some people say just don't eat rice and don't eat flour, but I'm Jamaican and I love my rice and my dumplings. Mm. So I have substituted the spelt flour 
for the white flour. Is that a good substitution? Yes. So that's a good substitution to have. Remember, your body needs some amount of carbohydrate. So it needs to get, and the sources of carbohydrates are your rice and your flour. So what I would encourage you, what you are actually doing is substituting the process, which is the white one, for your whole wheat, which will give you more fiber and vitamins. Yes. And what that does is that it takes longer for the body to digest or to break it down, so you won't have a rapid spike in your blood sugar levels. So it actually helps okay. to stabilize your blood sugar levels. So that's a good move on your part. Okay. And the difference between the brown, brown rice and the white rice? Because two pieces is better with white rice than brown rice. <laughs> so our brown rice will have fiber in there. So what fiber does is that, as I said earlier, it acts it kind of traps the sugar in the food, so as to say, so it takes longer for the body to break it down, so you won't have that rapid spike in blood sugar levels. So if you like your stew peas with your white rice, it's very important that you watch your portion control if you're going to have it. And of course, plate it with some vegetables to get that balance. That is very important. All right, thank you so much. We've got to go. Let's get a few more in. We are back in Jamaica. Donna is in Montego Bay. Welcome, Donna. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm very well, but you must address the dietitian. She is the one in the hot seat. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Um, how are you, ma'am? I have a quick question with regards to, you, we, I heard you speaking about food and other food items that are nutritious to your body. Mm -hmm. But I do have a question because of concern. Overweight? Is already has already set in and oh, past oh, the age of 50. What are the best re home remedies or food items which would you recommend for persons who are going through joint pains? Um, the doctor would want to tell you that you are going through osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. Of course, I'm not going to accept this words from any doctor. Well, so... Um, what I would, what rec would you recommend? So you normally, it's very important that you try to lose some weight if you're overweight and you have these conditions. Because the more weight you have on your body, the more pain or more pressure you're going to put on the joint. So it's important that you try to lose some weight. And I'm sure if, you have, if you're overweight or obese, your doctor would have encouraged you to lose some amount of weight because that will help. And how you go, weight loss is not easy. That's, very, that's the first thing I have to put out there. It's not easy. It takes a lot of dedication and time. So you have to watch what you eat in terms of your portion control, the quality, and also you have to combine it with some amount of exercise. But given the conditions that you have, we know it might be painful to exercise. So it's very important that you have you have some amount of consultation with your doctor or with a physiotherapist who can guide you in terms of exercise that will help you in terms of you know, managing how you can exercise given the condition that you have. And if you can consult a dietitian or a nutritionist, they will help you in terms of portion control to help you to lose that weight. So it's usually multidisciplinary approach in terms of helping you in, with those conditions. In terms of food, Right now, there's none that is coming to mind that might flare up those conditions. But as I said before, everyone is an individual, so you have to know how your body reacts to food. Okay. All right. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for calling. Bless you. Okay, the numbers are still available. 876-988-6262. Eight seven six nine three nine one five zero zero. Sugar coated cereal. Yes. That's a common thing all over the place. <laughs> it Can is. Can you speak a little more to it? Well, let's go to Trelawney and then you. The Yam Parish Trelawney, welcome. Good afternoon, Bishop. Good afternoon, Doctor. <laughs> Bless you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Doctor. Yes, Doctor. I am. Um, diabetic and I want to find out what are the different types of fruits I can eat. All right, so with diabetes, you can have a variety of fruits. What is important is the amount that you have. We usually say no more than two whole fruits for the day if you're a person living with diabetes. We usually recommend not having them at the same time, space it out, give your body a little time to utilize the sugar in the food. 
Also, natural fruit juices that the ones that you blend and make at home will naturally have sugars in them that is from the fruit and a serving of fruit juice is usually four ounces. Okay. So if you're going to have any fruit juice at all in your diet, it's no more than four ounces a serving. Four and ounces. Okay. to show you what that is, you know those little plastic eight ounce cup? Yes. Half of that is a yes, serving. Doctor, I know. I know. <laughs> right? So very small amounts and no more than two whole fruits. Okay, doctor. And um, vegetables, like all the vegetables are good. Yes, you do have what we call our starchy vegetables. However, we encourage those, you have them, but you don't go overboard with them. And our starchy vegetables would include our pumpkins and our carrots. Sometimes when we have them, we realize that they're a bit sweet. They'll have sweet taste to them. So oh, those are our starchy okay. vegetables. So we encourage, also our beetroot is one of those starchy vegetables. So we encourage you when you have diabetes, do not go overboard with your starchy veg. Okay, doctor. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All, yes, all right. Sir. Thank you for calling from Trelawney. God bless you. All right. We still got a couple of minutes for you to make your call from home or abroad. I raised the question on the sugar-coated cereal because our children, our young adults, and even adults do, you know, it's a quick thing. It's, it's a, very quick. You know, say a little more on that because... So, as I was saying, it's very important that you read your nutrition mm -hmm. labels. You read that little rectangular box that is either to the side or the back of the product. Because it, on them, it has what is known as serving sizes. So we tell you how much of the product is a serving and how much sugar is in there. Mm -hmm. So usually we don't watch the serving sizes when we're having our sugar cereals. We tend to just pour. Mm -hmm. And most times when we have it, we tend to combine it with a sweet milk. So we're having that sugary cereal and we're combining it with a sweet milk. Wow. So we're having that excess sugar in the body. Mm. So we need to watch again, as I said before, our portion sizes. Look at your food labels, look at the serving so you know how much sugar it is that you're putting in your body. And that way you can guide. And I was looking at the screen and I saw where somebody said that sugars are hidden with different names. <laughs> So we have to read our ingredients list. In the presentation earlier, I said sugar has many names. High fructose, corn syrup, dextrose, glucose, maltose, mm. it has a lot of names. So it's very important that we read the ingredient list as well as look at the nutrition facts so we can see how much sugar it is that we're actually putting in, in our body. Uh, you are seeking to engage persons to become more disciplined in their shopping. Who goes into the supermarket and walk around reading <laughs> What's on those stuff? They just pick them they up and move along. Them. So the important thing is you pick them up and you move <laughs> along. And when you're at home, that's when you read them and wow. you guide yourself accordingly. Okay. Now, we have to look that we live in a convenient age. Mm -hmm. We have things, almost anything that we buy or eat is in a box or a container. So we're going to have it. We now just have to read yes. and see how much it is that we should put in our bodies. Let's go to Spanish Town and hear from... Shettlewood, welcome to Time of Refreshing. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. Yes, we're here. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Bishop. Yes, the good afternoon. Yes, what I call to ask about, I, uh, I eat my vegetables, my lettuce, my tomato, my cucumber. But what I do, I have some salad dressings before, on them before I eat them. And I have them first before I eat anything else. So you want to know how it... <laughs> so that's good that you're having your vegetables. And if you choose to eat them first, nothing is wrong with that. The only oh, thing... Yes, the I, amount of salad dressing. Yes, that's what I was just about to say to you. Now, salad dressing can be high in fat yes. and high in cholesterol or even high in salt, so, sodium yes. as well. So you have to read your nutrition facts and look at what the serving size is. Is. Yes, it said it said two tablespoons. Two tablespoons, and what's the percentage sodium? Two forty. <laughs> so that's a little bit on the high side. Yes. What percentage is it? If you look at that tiny nutrition panel that's on it, what twenty percent? Per How much? I think it's twenty percent. Twenty percent. So remember, we say if it's below five, is usually good. Above twenty is high. 
So that means if you're going to have that salad dressing, two tablespoons will give you 20%. So what you could do is maybe have less than two tablespoons. Yes. Or yes, you yes. can make a natural vinaigrette. Make your own salad dressing. Yes. So you can use your vinegar with a little fruit juice and you reduce it. And that can be a vinaigrette that you can always pour on your vegetables low in sodium. Right? doesn't have all that preservatives. Or you can use your fruits with your vegetables. Cut up okay. a little pineapple. That's usually sweet. What is in season? Or watermelon. So we can add our fruits to our vegetables to help in terms of letting them taste a little bit better without adding that extra sodium or other preservatives to our meals. Okay, okay. Thank right. you for the call. Thank you, Bishop. Okay, thanks. Ble bless you. Well, some persons are laughing out loud. They say they read the labels <laughs> in the supermarket. You laughing at me. Okay, enjoy doing what you do in your interest. That's wonderful. I uh, do trust that others will do the very same and ensure that we stay in good health. We can take two more calls if you want to make them. You and you and whomever. 876-988-8662-876-939-1500. The dietitian, nutritionist, she wants to address your concerns. And of course, loads of information has been disseminated. We could see the many comments, and we thank you so very much. There's a plum that is named June plum. Yes. Uh, it's named after a particular month, <laughs> not that it you know, comes around in that month. Yeah. Someone asked, what's the, the value, nutritional value from, a June, from June plum? So June plum, as with any fruit, will have some amount of vitamin C. It's more of a tangy fruit, mm -hmm. so you'll have vitamin C. See. Right, as well as the color sometimes I suggest that you will have some amount of vitamin A. So looking at it, you might say to yourself, you know, because it has all those fibrous, the mm -hmm. seed, but it does provide some amount of vitamins and minerals. And as usual, it, there's a serving size, a medium June plum is a serving okay. of a fruit. So, and remember we said two fruits per day, whole fruits per day. If you're a person living with diabetes, so that means you'll be about two June plums if you're having solely June plums. So not half dozen with the black pepper and the salt on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so there you go with the June plum and you heard about the jackfruit and all the others. And we trust that we will have good health as we choose to eat healthily and you know, just be mindful of what we put in our system. This is a unit we have to work with. It's the vehicle that takes us along, and without it being optimal in its function and operation, we will be set back quite some. So let us please try and do the best we can. Yeah. And trust the Almighty God to, to help us. Uh, Marjorie from, is that Lawrenceville, Georgia? Okay. Please give us a simple salad dressing recipe suggestion. I think we'll close out on that. Simple salad dressing recipe suggestion. So as I said earlier to the caller, you can always make your own vinaigrette. So just a little vinegar with a fruit juice and you reduce it until it gets thick almost to a syrup consistency, and then you can use that as your salad dressing. And I saw where somebody say they, they add raisins to their vegetables to help to spice it up, to make it a little bit more tasty. So that's one of the healthy salad dressing recipes that I would suggest that you can use. Mm -hmm. Let's use our natural fruits as the dressing for our vegetables. All right, thank you so much. Anything else you want to share, Ms. Palomino, from your, uh, just having looked at the, some of the comments there, you got a minute or yes. two to just. Yes, so I saw where somebody was asking, which is healthier, wheat or white? I'm confused. Now remember the difference oh. between wheat and white products is that the wheat isn't usually intact, so you will get that added fiber and B vitamins that you wouldn't get from your white product. 
And what the wheat product will do, it will sit in the stomach a little longer, so it takes longer for the body to digest or to break it down. So you have a slower release in terms of the product into the body. So in terms of that, it is healthier in having your wheat product than having your white, which doesn't have that fiber. So once you eat it, your body is going to break it down. And that is very important, especially when it comes to persons living with diabetes. You don't want to have products or have food that once it goes into the body, the body breaks it down quickly and elevates your blood sugar levels. So in terms of that, you have, it's best you have your wheat products versus your white. Okay. Would you want to comment on what Juliet Maloney is saying? It would be good if the Ministry of Health in Jamaica can post the accurate nutritional value for her Jamaican foods. That would help. A bit. I think yeah. that's a bit. Yeah. So as I said, we have what is known as our food-based dietary guidelines. And it's a book that will break down in terms of the different food groups, what are portion sizes of the different foods, and what are the amount of nutrients that you will get from it. There is information out there in terms of how much nutrients are the different type of nutrients that are in particular foods. However, if you want to know more, as I said, utilize your dietitians and your nutritionists. They have that information. So yes. any questions that you have, you know, always try to contact one and they can clarify whatever information or misinformation that you might have regarding food. All right. Genesis tells us that, the, well, this is contemporary English version, okay? One of the stranger versions of the Bible reading. It says the Lord made a garden in a place called Eden which was in the east, and he put the man there. The Lord God filled the garden with all kinds of beautiful trees and fruit trees. So the Lord established certainly a pattern for us to be mindful of and to follow. Eat from the soil, eat from the trees as much as you can. Well, in controlled portions, of course. And I suppose our dietitian will say that will assist in enhancing your good health yes. and keep you well. Well, we want to thank you, Ms. Sabrina Palomino, for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, certainly a pleasure having you, and you have certainly disseminated tremendous loads of information. So now that you are harmed with those information, please ensure that you... Do not be like the man who hear and do not do. The scripture says to be a, a hearer and not a doer, it makes no sense at all. Having heard, you must make the application so you can reap the benefits and the blessing from all of that. So we want to thank you all for sharing today on all of these platforms. And once again, we thank our dietitian, dietitian, nutritionist presenter, for taking the time out of the busy, busy assignments there at KPH, especially at this time, to share with us. But of course, part of her uh, service and serving people everywhere in life. So Viva. thank you so much. I want to thank the studio engineer and technicians and everybody on the other side. And Sister Raquel, our coordinator, may God bless you. And may the Lord bless Miss Sabrina Palomino as she continue to serve the nations. And may she have long life, good health and strength, and the fullness of God's blessings upon her life. We close in prayer for you and you and all of you. Our gracious Father, we thank you for today's presenter. We thank you for the presentation we thank you for the participants across Jamaica and in other places. We thank you for those who have called in and have raised their questions, which would certainly speak to many other people's questions. We ask you, Lord God, to bless your people. We pray that health will be ours as we apply ourselves in the best way possible. It is in your word that above all things, you would that we prosper and be in health as we prosper spiritually. So, Father, we ask you now to heal those who stand in need of a healing touch. 
We know your hands are still reaching out. They are not short. Your ears are still open. They are not heavy. So we ask you, Lord, Lord God, to minister to your people. Make them completely whole. And grant that when all is said and done, you shall receive the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we shall receive the blessings. We thank you for hearing our prayers. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you from all of us here at Power of Faith Ministry. It's a time of refreshing. Until tomorrow, God's willing, we'll be here with another presentation. Good afternoon to everybody. I can't take a heart that's broken making over again But I I can't take a soul.